Hi guys, here's a video that goes over 5.5 day 1 where you're graphing sine and cosine, finding the amplitude, period, and the phase shift. So before we start graphing sine and cosine, let's go back to the original graphs or the basic graphs that we did from our notes from 5.3 day 2. So we have our basic sine graph. Your basic sine graph we got from graphing y equals sine of x. And then the basic cosine graph we got from graphing y equals cosine of x. So the amplitude is how high or how low your graph is going to go. So the highest that your sine graph goes is 1. The lowest that it goes is negative 1. So the amplitude for your basic sine graph is 1. Same thing for cosine. If you'll notice, the highest that cosine goes is 1. And the lowest that cosine goes is also negative 1. So the amplitude for cosine is 1. Amplitude can never be negative because it's talking about a distance. Now for the period, the period of a trig function is the length that it takes for it to go through a full cycle. So for example, if we look at the sine graph, this portion right here matches up with this portion. Okay, they're basically the same exact thing. So the length that it takes to repeat is this length over here, which is 2 pi. So the period for sine is 2 pi. For cosine, if we look, this portion right here matches up with this portion on the left. So again, this distance is the period because it's the same. So this portion of the graph is the same as that portion. So it's the length of one full cycle before it starts to repeat. So the period for cosine is also 2 pi. Now before we start graphing, let's get some observations done. So when we're talking about observations of your sine and cosine, we're just coming up with some general generalizations. To be able to do that, I only want to look at half of the graph. So I'm not going to look at the negative side anymore, just the positive side. So if we look at sine, sine starts at zero, and it also ends at zero. So over the course of one full period, which was 2 pi, it starts at 0 and ends at 0. Also, right in the middle of the period, so the period is 2 pi, half of that is pi, right in the middle is also at 0. And then if we cut that in half again, your graph is at the top of your amplitude. If we cut it in half going from pi to 2 pi, your graph is down at your negative amplitude. So all of your sine graphs are going to look something like this, just some variation of it, okay, because it is going to be shifted around and stretched once we actually work through some problems. For cosine, on the other hand, we're still looking at just one cycle, getting a generalization for one cycle. Cosine starts at 1 and ends at 1. So it starts at your positive amplitude and ends at your positive amplitude. And if we cut that in half, look at half of our period at pi, your graph is down at your negative amplitude, or negative 1. When we look in between 0 and pi, it's at 0. Between pi and 2 pi, it's at 0. So all of your cosine graphs are going to look something like this. It looks like a nice curvy V. Okay, let's actually graph something. Oh, before we do that, I guess we need some formulas. So amplitude is the number that is in front of your trig function. So that's your A. Um, it's always positive. That's why it's absolute value, because amplitude is talking about a distance. Period. So your period's not always 2 pi, because sometimes we'll have some variations with their functions. So it's 2 pi divided by absolute value of B. B is the number that's in front of X. And then your phase shift will tell you how many units to the left or to the right your trig function is moving. Now, to be able to get the phase shift, you need to change your equation from this blue one to the pink one. Blue one to the pink one. Now, what's happening from the blue one to the pink one is you're just factoring out the B. So if you notice, your B right there is right in front of the parentheses. And then that'll help us find the phase shift. So this right here is your phase shift. Now your phase shift is not actually C over B. It's negative C over B because we always do the opposite um, of what's inside the parentheses. Okay, now let's actually graph something. So we're graphing uh, 3 sine of x. So we're going to start by finding our amplitude. Your amplitude is 3 because that's the number in front of your trig function. 
the period is 2 pi divided by b, but b in this case is 1 since the number in front of our x is 1, so period is 2 pi. The phase shift, since we're not adding or subtracting anything from the x, this one doesn't actually have a phase shift, so your phase shift is 0. Now to create the graph, we're going off of these scales. So the first interval or the first set of numbers is for your x-axis. So this is your x-min, x-max, and x-scale. Your second set of numbers is for the y-axis. So there's your y-min, y-max, and y-scale. So I'm going to go ahead and create my x-axis. Sorry, that's the y-axis. There's my x-axis. Now I need to go from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi, and I'm scaling it by pi over 4. So from 0 to 2 pi, that's going to be 8 tick marks, because there's 8 pi over 4s in 2 pi. So there's my 2 pi, because we're scaling it by pi over 4s. I'm going to go in the opposite direction as well. And then my y-axis is going from negative 5 to 5. Okay. Now for the amplitude, I always like to draw this dashed line as kind of a border. So that's how high or how low my graph is going to go. Since my amplitude is at 3, I'm going to go ahead and put that dashed line at 3. That way it makes your graphs nice and pretty and a little more accurate. Okay, so we're graphing sine. Sine starts and ends at zero for the period. So since there's no phase shift, you're starting at zero, zero, and the period is two pi, so you're gonna end at two pi, and it also ends at zero. When I cut that in half, my graph is at zero, so from zero to two pi, when I cut that in half, I'm at pi or the fourth tick mark, since from zero to two pi was the eighth tick mark. When I cut that in half again, I'm up at the positive amplitude. When I go between pi and two pi, cut that in half, I'm at my negative amplitude. And here's one cycle of your graph. Um, so since it is periodic, it's cyclical, it repeats, so I can take what I have on the right and basically copy and paste it over to the left, just continuing the pattern. So then now I'm down at my negative amplitude, back at zero, positive amplitude, back at zero. So you'll see the left side of um, the y-axis matches what's on the right side of the y-axis. Now you can graph these in a calculator, just make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Um, these values over here are the windows for the calculator, and then you can just type in 3 sine of x and check to see that this graph is correct. Alright, let's do another one. y equals 1 half cosine of 1 fourth x, so my amplitude is 1 half. The period is 2 pi divided by 1 fourth, which is going to be 8 pi. And the phase shift, once again, since you're not adding anything to the x, phase shift is 0. Now, if you look at the way that I have scaled the x-axis, I'm going from negative 4 pi to 8 pi, scaling it by pi. So then I have 1, 2, 3, 4 for negative 4 pi. Gonna have eight tick marks on the right to get to eight pi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And my y-axis is scaled from negative two to two. Now my amplitude is only one half, so it's gonna be a pretty small graph in terms of height anyway. So positive one half and negative one half. Now we're graphing cosine, so cosine starts at starts and ends at your positive amplitude over the course of your period. So there's no phase shift, so we're still going to start um, over here at your positive amplitude. Now over the entire period is 8 pi, so it ends over here. When I cut that in half in the middle, I'm down at my negative amplitude. 
and then when I cut it in half again, I'm at zero. Well, that wasn't very good. Let's try that again. So then that creates one cycle of your function. I can continue the pattern to get the other side. Now I do want you to graph throughout the entire interval, okay? So I don't want you to just graph one cycle, I want you to graph throughout the entire interval from negative four pi to eight pi. And of course you can graph this in the calculator to check it. Now let's, let's see what happens when you have some phase shifts. So I have three sine of x plus pi over six. So my amplitude is three. Period is two pi divided by b. b is the number in front of x, which is one. So it's still two pi. Now since b is one, there's no sense to factor it out. So we'll just leave the equation as it is. This one does have a phase shift. Your phase shift is the opposite of what's being added to the x as long as your b is one. So your phase shift is going to be negative pi over six. Okay, so looking at the way that I have this scaled, I'm going from negative pi to two pi, scaling it by pi over six. So zero to negative pi, that's gonna be six tick marks since I'm scaling it by pi over six. And then going all the way to two pi, that's gonna be 12 tick marks since I'm scaling it by pi over six. Y-axis goes from negative five to five. Amplitude is three, so the highest I'm gonna go is up to three. And down to negative three. So these dashed lines again are optional, but I find them quite helpful. Now your graph, your sine graph, normally starts at zero, zero and goes through an entire period, but we do have a phase shift. So instead of starting at zero, zero, we're actually starting at negative pi over six. So since we scaled our x-axis by pi over six, it's that first tick mark on the left. Now it starts and ends at zero for an entire period. So your period is two pi, uh, but, and normally we would stop at two pi, but we have the phase shift to the left, pi over six, so now your sine graph stops right here. Or since two pi is equivalent to 12 pi over six, you can count 12 tick marks from this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then that is where your cycle is going to end. Okay, so when I cut that in half, I'm also at zero. When I cut it in half again, I'm at my positive amplitude cut it in half in the opposite direction and I'm in negative amplitude. And then there is one cycle of your graph. Now your graph is gonna keep going up, so I'm gonna continue the arrow since I want it for the entire um, interval up to two pi. Okay, so I'm not just gonna stop at this point, I do wanna continue it. Following the same pattern, going in the opposite direction, here is the rest of your graph. And of course you can graph it to check it. All right, one more. So we do have um, a number in front of your x, so let's go ahead and factor that out first. So I have y equals two cosine, I'm gonna factor out the three. When you do factor out the three, you're just dividing everything by three. So there's your new equation, and we wanna factor it out because that's gonna help us find the phase shift. So my amplitude is still two, um, the period is two pi divided by b, which is three, so two pi over three. And then your phase shift is positive pi over three. Okay, so the scale is going from negative two pi over three to four pi over three, scaling it by one pi over three. So scaling it by one pi over three means I'm going two tick marks to the left to get to negative two pi over three. And four tick marks to the right to get to four pi over three. Y axis is negative five to five. 
Okay, uh, amplitude is 2, so I'm going to go up to 2 and down to negative 2. And we do have a phase shift, so normally cosine will start at your positive amplitude on your y-axis, but since your phase shift is pi over 3, you're going to start right here at the phase shift. Um, so it starts and ends at your positive amplitude over the course of an entire period. So your period is 2 pi over 3. So this is 1 pi over 3 since we scaled it by pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is over there. So this right here represents the length of the period. So now my graph is going to end right here for one cycle of cosine. When I cut that in half, I'm at my negative amplitude. Cut it in half again, and your graph is at zero. So sometimes when you graph, it ends up being nice at your tick marks. Other times you're going to be in between, which is the case for this. We can follow the pattern of what your cosine graph is doing to get the rest of the graph. And connect the dots, make it nice and curvy. And there's your graph. And of course you can graph in the calculator if you need some help getting uh, the shape of your graph. Alright, I hope this video helps. See you in class.